So today we're going to talk about the central nervous system. The central nervous system is going to consist of the brain and the spinal cord. And when we talk primarily about the spinal cord, we think about the fact that the spinal cord links our brain to the rest of the body. And it also contains nerve cells called interneurons. We're going to see that the interneurons are actually also located in the brain. Um, we're going to talk specifically more about them a little later on. And we're also going to deal with reflexes when we deal with the spinal cord. Let's move on specifically to the brain. The brain is really what controls most of our body's functions. Anything that happens in our body in terms of movement and memory comes from our brain. It relays and processes messages and primarily really coordinates with other body systems. Many of the other body systems wouldn't function without the brain. That's why when you get into a massive accident, if you have brain damage, brain injuries, they look at your brain function to see and determine whether or not you're actually still alive. When we look at the brain and we talk about the nervous system in general, we say that it typically responds, regulates, and coordinates many of our body functions and how our body works. There are several parts to the brain. We're going to go through a few of them, some of them in more detail than others. But typically, the brain is divided into three sections the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. We're going to concentrate on the regions more from the forebrain and the hindbrain, not as much from the midbrain. The main part of the forebrain that we are really going to deal with uh, is going to be the cere cerebrum. The forebrain happens to be the largest and the most complex part of the brain. And in terms of the cerebrum, that's the area that has all of the folds and the grooves in it. There are four different lobes of the cerebrum that are going to process. So this deals with our intelligence, speech, memory, senses, and movement. We're not going to learn the different portions of the brain with that respect um, in terms of those lobes, but know that they deal with all of those different functions. The inner portion of the forebrain deals with our, has our thalamus, and it also contains the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We're going to see later on in the year that the pituitary is one of the parts of the brain that produces a lot of our hormones that helps out with body function. Hypothalamus is going to help to regulate our body temperature and uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail on those as the year goes on. In terms of the cerebrum we're going to go into a little bit more detail. There are right and left halves to the cerebrum. So we call those hemispheres, kind of like you would think of the hemispheres from social studies. And they're connected in the center by a bridge that we call the corpus callosum. Now typically a lot of people consider the left side of the brain to be more of the logical, analytical, or objective part of the brain. So some people would say, oh, I'm a more left-brained person. Um, and science has looked to try to prove that a little bit more and get some more hard, cold facts on on whether or not that's completely true because we do know that people that have damage to different parts of their brain still have the ability to be logical and analytical if the left side is damaged. Um, the right side of the brain tends to be more intuitive, creative, and subjective. Um, and then if we move on to the cortex or the outer layer, that's often what we refer to as the gray matter and it collects information from our senses in order to process other parts of the nervous system. So when we get information from other parts of our nervous system, the cortex is going to be that portion of the brain that's going to collect the information from those senses to get that information processed. Now I said we were going to skip over the midbrain. We're not really going to concentrate on that, but we are going to deal a little bit with the hindbrain. The hindbrain is under the back of the cerebrum and it contains several portions. One being the cerebellum, which is often referred to as the little brain, and it deals with balance, movement, and coordination. And we also have the pons and the medulla, which take in, send out, and coordinate all of the brain's messages with the midbrain, which remember we didn't really talk about the midbrain much at all. So the pons and medulla are pretty critical for survival. It also controls the automatic portions of our body functions, which include things like breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, swallowing, digestion, and blinking. So if you happen to have your pons or your medulla damaged in some sort of an accident of some sorts, 
you would more than likely experience some sort of massive death due to the fact that you will no longer be able to coordinate your breathing and heart rate and blood pressure quite so well. A lot of times we call the pons and the medulla the brain stem. Um, 